Mr. Beat presents Presidential, presidential Elections in American, American History. History. The 17th presidential election in American history took place on November 2nd, 1852. You might call this election the election of 1844 part two because it was very similar to it. Just like in 1844, a young dark horse candidate won. Also like in 1844, the incumbent president was a Whig who had become president after the death of his war hero predecessor. And that Whig didn't get his party's nomination for the next election. In 1852, that Whig was Millard Fillmore, who took over after Zachary Taylor died in 1850. The biggest national issue during Taylor and Fillmore's presidencies was the expansion of slavery out in western territories. The Compromise of 1850. Compromise of 1850 had helped ease tensions a bit, but it really just kicked the can down the road. The country was becoming further divided between Northerners and Southerners over slavery. You know what else was divided? The Whig Party. They had a hard time deciding who their nominee for the 1852 election would be. Many favored Fillmore. But many others favored Mexican-American war hero Winfield Scott, old fuss and feathers himself. Even others favored Secretary of State Daniel Webster. In the end, it was old fuss and feathers Winfield Scott who would get the nomination. William Alexander Graham, the Secretary of the Navy and former governor and senator from North Carolina, would be his running mate. The Democratic Party had at least nine candidates who were all fighting to get nominated. At their convention, four major candidates stood out. Lewis Cass, who won the nomination in 1848. James Buchanan, the former Secretary of State and Senator from Pennsylvania. Stephen Douglas, a Senator from Illinois. And William L. Marcy, the former Secretary of War. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, comes another dark horse candidate for the Democrats. Franklin Pierce, a 48-year-old former senator and representative from New Hampshire. They ended up nominating Pierce with William R. King, a senator from Alabama, as his running mate. Third parties? Oh, there were plenty. The biggest was the Free Soil Party, which had a strong showing in 1848. They nominated this time John P. Hale, another senator from New Hampshire, with George Washington Julian as his running mate, a U.S. representative from Indiana who was later a radical Republican before it was cool. The Union Party formed after many Whigs were upset with Winfield Scott's nomination. They nominated Daniel Webster for president. Then there was the Native American Party. No, not that Native American, that Native American party. They were also known as the Know Nothing Party by opponents who thought that they, well, knew nothing. Surprisingly, the party embraced the nickname because I guess they liked being called stupid. They also nominated Daniel Webster, even though Webster didn't approve. And then there was the Southern Rights Party, an offshoot of the Democratic Party that nominated George Troop, a former senator, representative, and governor of Georgia. This was the first election in which citizens of the new state of California could vote. The two biggest political parties, the Whigs and the Democrats, had similar platforms, so the campaigns were most just about the personalities of Pierce and Scott. This jaded a lot of voters and explains why so many third parties popped up. The lack of clear-cut issues caused the voter turnout to decline. And here are the results. Franklin Pierce won in a landslide, becoming the 14th president of the United States. Oh, Pierce kicked butt all right. He received 254 electoral votes, and Winfield Scott only received 42. Pierce received 50.8% of the popular vote, and Scott received just 43.9%. John P. Hale came in third with 4.9% of the popular vote. All other candidates received much less than 1% of the popular vote. Daniel Webster, the Union Party, and and unofficial Native American Party candidate died one week before the election. Despite this, he got 7,000 votes and finished fourth place. The fact that this many people voted for him even though he was dead sort of proves how disappointed voters were with the two biggest candidates. William R. King became the 13th vice president in American history. However, he died six weeks after taking office, serving the shortest tenure in history for someone who didn't become president. Babyface Pierce became the 
youngest president in American history up to that point. Tragedy seemed to follow this guy around a lot. Before he was even sworn into office, he was in a train accident which killed his only surviving son. This cast a great shadow on his presidency, which most historians say did not go well. Scott losing the election of 1852 was devastating for the Whigs, and the election was the last one in which they even ran a candidate. Following the election, the party began to collapse. I'll see you for the next election, buddy.